What's up, people? I'm gonna get this thing rolling here in a couple of minutes, but a couple of minutes beforehand, get to do it. Got my handy dandy water as well. They are live, Deanie, just so you know. Thanks. We're live. If you guys want to ask a couple questions beforehand, all you have to do is go to the uh, chat row below, and that will allow you to be able to get a couple of questions beforehand, which I think will be tremendous. And I'm looking forward to you guys asking those questions. So all you have to do is go to the chat row below and ask a couple of questions. Hopefully the email that was supposed to go out will go out soon. Oh, I bet it's there, it's just in a different file. Let's check and see. We'll get things rolling here in a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. But if you have any questions in the meantime, all you have to do is ask. Uh, in the chat box below and i will respond to you live and also throughout this uh, as well so we'll just get things rolling right at two o'clock hopefully everything is going good how are your days today what's up dave what's up deanie how's it going there we go i wonder if it's gonna go If you guys have to leave at any time, you will get a recording of this afterwards. No need to worry. Um, so it'll be good. We'll give it to you as soon as this is over, or a little bit after uh, this is over, and you guys will be able to get it. Um, but we'll get things started right at 2 o'clock EST for Eastern Standard Time. my first webinar of the year. I'm a little nervous. Got my <clears throat> one million cups coffee mug. Got Paul on the text message. He's ready to go. Are you ready to go? I'm just gonna be gravy. Okay, Dini. That's lovely. Thanks, Dini. You're such a swell person. 159. Good things rolling in a couple of minutes. If you guys are through to a couple of minutes, obviously, so we can get things rolling a little bit later.
Oh no, that's not good. We will take a couple minutes just to allow everyone to get on at this point. Because it's important to be light. You're hopping on. Thanks for joining us. Super stoked to be doing this webinar today. Doing this live out of the office. Because that's what we got to do. Can um, you call Paul and see why this email hasn't gone out? I'm texting him. He said he was going to go, but this is the beauty of live television or webinars. I just want to make sure everyone's getting the live link. That's what we do here. Yeah. So people are looking for the link to the webinar. Can we get it pushed, please? See, let's just do this. Send email. I've never used this before. So this is going to be the first time I've ever done this. This is going to be fun. Send an email. I don't even know what I'm doing. Probably not the best to do this. I think I just messed up the system. Because I'm crazy like that. We'll get things rolling here in just a minute.
All right, y'all, what is going on? Chris, what's up? We're going to get things going in about 20 seconds. Had a little bit of a technical difficulty, but that is what happens. In the middle of, you know, hashtag Hustle City. But we are super stoked to be doing this. So just stand by and we will go. Chris, how are you doing today? Very delayed. All right. So thank you guys so much for being here today, for finding your first and next customers on a budget. The first thing I want to talk about today, and really as a way to kind of introduce everything, is we all have been living some period of our lives. Maybe it's 16 years, um, or however old you are, Chase, 17 years old. Chris, you're in your late 20s. I'm 31. We all have been doing something our entire lives. And we've all been building something, whether it's our own companies, someone else's companies, a network of people through school, through just business, through um, recreational things, a ton of different things. And one thing that I think a lot of people underestimate is the network that they've invested in for years. And so a lot of what we'll talk about today is really focusing on re-leveraging if that's a word, reacquainting, uh, uh, becoming uh, an acquaintance with these people again, even if it's been years, uh, but you invest in, in them at some point and studies show that it's far, um, far cheaper for you to um, keep a customer than it is to re or to, to buy a new customer. So if that is true as well with networks, think about it. If you already have a network with someone, it's going to be a lot easier for you to, um, have them see your vision than it is to try and get someone else to do it. And so today, a lot of what we'll talk about is um, leveraging that. And so the first thing that I want to talk about, and we'll say this, is that um, a lot of people are looking at their lives and I hear this all the time. Recently, I just did a bunch of 10 minute calls and a lot of people said, you know, I'm, I'm working really hard, but I don't understand what's working. And what we find, hey, Brian, what's up? Um, what we find is that because we allow emotions to get into our lives, we actually are working hard at something, but we're not always necessarily working smart at something. And so here's what I would like you guys to do. So it's Wednesday today, two o'clock on the East Coast. What I want you guys to do is starting today or starting tomorrow morning, I guess, um, I want you to start documenting your entire lives from the time that you wake up to the time that you go to bed and how much time you actually sleep and figure out exactly what you're doing. So this needs to be, I wrote emails for 10 minutes. I had one meeting. The meeting lasted 30 minutes. A lot of people will say I had a 30 minute meeting and you know, that's fine, but it wasn't really a 30 minute meeting or was it 15 minutes to drive to that places and then another 15 minutes to get somewhere else. Did you get stopped on the street? That's actually now an hour. So, you know, 15 plus 30 plus 15, your one hour meeting which actually didn't result into anything was an hour wasted out of your day. And so what I want you to do is, is even if it's on a piece of paper, if it's on a spreadsheet, you know, Google Docs, something like that, I want you to document your entire lives. Now, this is going to take a little bit of manpower on you uh, or woman power on you to actually do this. But I promise you at the end of it, you'll be able to look at your life and actually analyze it from a data uh, perspective. So from tomorrow morning until the end of Wednesday next week, I want to know exactly what you're doing. You don't actually have to tell me, but I want you to know exactly what you're doing. And so if you spend four hours on Netflix at night, you need to document that so that at the end of that, that seven days, you can look at it and, and analyze it and say, what actually did I get? What results did I get from this? So think of it like this. So you have all your time here and you had three meetings that lasted one hour each. And during that time, you bought 
uh, coffee for you and that other person. Let's just say it's Starbucks and it was $3 each. We're being generous and saying it's that cheap. So that's $6 plus one hour each. That's a lot of time. Did that meeting actually result into something tangible immediately. A lot of people are focused on the, I need to create this big picture when instead they should be trying to win right now. And so by um, qualifying everything that you do into a situation where you're focused on making, um, making sure that your meetings and everything that you do has some sort of data behind it that get to some sort of tangible result is what you should be focused on. Now, I know a lot of you are probably saying, well, Zach, you know, that's great and dandy, but uh, one thing that I really, you know, I have a project that's going to take me nine months to land. That's fine, but you should also be creating a cycle of things over and over and over and over again so that you don't have to wait nine months for that deal. So what I would do at the end of this result is say, you know, if you have 10% big picture stuff, that's okay, but don't focus your entire life on that one thing, focus on the things that convert today. And so take the inventory of your life for the next seven days, starting tomorrow morning, and then analyze that with what actually worked. What I promise you will find at the end of that is that something that you used emotions to uh, make that decision with actually isn't getting you a good result, but you kept doing it because you thought emotionally it was a better thing. I do this myself. And what I find is that <laughs> there are things that I think work and then they, and then I actually look at them and I'm like, wow, like uh, I did this thing and I went to this meeting. I thought it was gonna be great, but nothing tangible has happened with it. So I need to uh, stop doing that thing and start doing something different. And so what I find amazing is that a lot of people do something because they think it's what they're supposed to do and, and allow emotions to be it. And at the end of the day, the emotions actually crush, um, are crushing them. So instead of making a smart decision, they're making an emotional decision without data backing it and are, are very much hurting uh, their business cause. So I know a lot of you guys are on right now. Sorry, getting started a little late. Had a little bit of a technical difficulty. No worries, we're recording all of this. You guys will be able to watch it in its entirety um, afterwards. We'll send up the link. Thank you guys so much for being here. Brian, Dave, Chris, Chase, Dini. Really excited to have all of you guys here. If you'll see below the video, there is a, um, a chat where you guys can ask questions. If you guys have any questions throughout this, um, go through and ask. I will answer as many as possible and be as specific as possible um, and uh, afterwards, if you guys want to email me at Zach, Z-A-C-K, at startwithhatch.com, feel free to do that as well. But let's get right into the show. So today's entire thing is about finding your first and next customers on a very limited budget. Now, we say no budget here because the majority of these things are on no budgets. Now, sometimes you can pay a little bit of money to get something a little bit quicker. Um, but let's just say for the case of a beer, you can get all this stuff done. Um, and I promise you, you can because I've done it myself. All right. Number one, we just talked about taking your inventory, but let's go into inventory even deeper. Even deeper. Hey, Jared, what's up? Um, so you've been creating this network of your life over the last, you know, 18, 17, 35, 50 years. And now what can you do? to make sure that you're leveraging that in every type of situation. Now look at your business or the business that you're working on is two different buckets. Bucket number one is customer that's gonna last or that, that is your actual target. And then you have this other bucket of, of people that you have been investing your time in, whether you realize it or not, over the last however many years old you are. And so um, there's two different buckets. Uh, both of them are extremely important. Um, but one of them you can leverage right now and one of them you can leverage down the way. So what I want you guys to do is uh, raise your hand right now if you are on LinkedIn, if many of you are. Um, and if you're not, you probably should be. It's the business social network that I, I don't know, two, three, four hundred million people are on. And it's a place where you can actually go in and learn a lot. Um, you can learn a lot of different um you can learn a lot of different strategies um, by getting on LinkedIn and doing that. So think, uh, so think about LinkedIn as a, an asset for yourself. 
um, that you can leverage each and every time by just doing some simple things. So this is um, a LinkedIn account. And so um, if you're on LinkedIn, which we're gonna make the assumption that you are, um, you can go on there, you can create a profile for yourself, but you can really dig in and find certain people that um, could be a benefit to you. Now, this is not my account because we wanted to show you guys um, a specific account um, that we had no ties to. So you can go at the t up to the top. Um, and so this is this is the view that you guys would see. And then you guys can go to the top. And I just got engaged. I'm super excited about that. And now I'm looking for a wedding planner. So how do I find a wedding planner? Well, I can do a lot of different things. But in this case, maybe go on LinkedIn and see who's the best. See who I already have connections with but forgot about it over time. And so all you have to do is go to the top search bar and type in wedding planner. And as you'll see, there's a lot of people tied to me that are in my backyard. And so I can reestablish those networks with those people at any given time. And I think it's so important to stay on top of these things because they can go away so quickly. Sean, someone to cater it for me. That would be lovely. Thank you. Uh, you know, in all honesty, in this whole wedding thing, I have a lot of friends and a lot of acquaintances and a lot of people I've done business with. And I'm, I have no idea who, how I'm going to choose these things. It's going to be very, very, very tough. Um, to choose who I actually uh, go with on some of these things. So what I may do is pick people that I actually have no, um, because, so I don't pick the wrong person. I may just pick someone I have no ties to um, just so I don't hurt someone's feelings. But keep your name in the running because that will be very good. Um, and, I, and Chris, you know, webcasting for that, that would be great. But you see, just by typing in a, a certain keyword that you need, you can go through and find this. And so what's great is... Um, you can then go in, and so if you guys can see on the page, what you have is now you can connect with these people. So I actually, in this case, I'm connected through people, but I'm not actually connected with this person. I'm not, I'm not connected with Jess or Veronica or Angie. But if I want to, I could simply just you know connect right here, and then um, once they accept, you go into here, this next page, and you can create um, a relationship with that person by just messaging them. And so you can... The best thing to always do if you don't know someone directly um, is to try and get an introduction. But in case, you know, just reach out to them and see um, um, see what they're working on. Now, don't give a, a huge sales pitch. Just try and introduce yourself and see how maybe you can work together or learn about them. What are their big pain points? Try and find a, a common denominator that can help you. The first thing in sales is never to pitch yourself but in fact to um to actually to learn as much about them as possible and so i see a couple of you guys have your hand raised you're on linkedin leverage the crap out of it we're going to go over a series of things just like this as to where you already are let's jump to facebook groups how many of you guys are on a facebook group again likely a lot of you guys how many of you guys have ever leveraged them let me ask you this. Here's one thing that I hate about Facebook groups. Who here has looked at the person in the Facebook group that just posts things to post things about their business and just sales, 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 sales? You love that, don't you? No, you hate it. You hate seeing those things because they're just like a commercial. Uh, they're just an advertisement and you want to you wanna get off of them. And so if all these people do, you see this person right here, you know, anniversary pin badge, uh, Tom, nothing against Tom, but you know, he's selling on here. Leverage Facebook groups in a different way. Instead of trying to find a Facebook group and spam it, instead, get on a Facebook group, see who's communicating on the way that they are, and then create direct messages with these type of people. So as you can see here, um, and I cannot pronounce her name, uh, but uh, we'll, um, we'll just use the initials H. B, HB is talking about something that she's doing and, and, a, and an issue that she has. So when um, you can you know you can comment on the thing here, or you can become friends with her, um, or, or so as you see here, you actually will, um, you will go in here and you'll comment, and you're actually becoming an authority in this space because you're helping her out. Help, 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 help. 
Chase, I don't know, man. That push right there could have been um, a spam. I'm just kidding, brother. And so to go even further on Facebook, and I do this all the time. People ask me, what are the, what's the number one way that you've been able to grow your business? And I'm going to be very honest and I'm very candid. It's two ways. Number one is through meetups. Number two is by going on Facebook, seeing people that are my target customers, so people that are looking to grow their business or start their business, seeing that they're talking about that, and then I have a one-to-one -one communication with them. I can tell you that everyone that I talk to on Facebook, it's because I did my due diligence, I did my research, and then I found them, and then I created a relationship with them by just saying, hello, I like what you're working on. Because everyone that's an entrepreneur or that's going through the, uh, the things that you go through, it's tough. But by just having you know that crying shoulder, it goes a long way. Now don't do it just to do it, do it because you want to. You're creating long-term relationships in this case. So in this case with, um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get mad at Dave now uh, as he's staring at me. Why do we choose someone's name that I can't pronounce? Come on, man. It's fine. It's, it happens. This was a challenge. I know he did it to me on purpose. Uh, and that's fine. No, but uh, uh, HHB, uh, uh, you know, I could, and just create a relationship with this person. In this case, you see, we, we took the word search. And we, um, we looked at the word freelance, as you'll see here. And then we go, and then she's having these kind of communications. So now you go in and create a relationship with this person. Remember, everything that we're going to be talking about today is things that you guys can do. A lot of people tell me, Zach, you know, I, don't, I can't do this or I can't do that. All the things that I'm going to tell you today are things that I have done or our companies have done and done them very successfully. And they don't cost money, but they do take one thing. It's called time. And if you think that things are going to just turn around immediately and it's a, a get rich quick scheme, that just just that's not going to happen. You see these things on Facebook and Twitter and everywhere where it's like, oh, I just made $5,000 and there's wads of cash. But then you, you really dive in. You realize that person is false. Everything that we're going to be talking about today and we'll continue to talk about is something that has happened because you take the risk yourself and you put in the time. If you put in the time, good things can happen. Um, thanks to you guys that are uh, trickling in. Uh, Johnny, Tola, Jared, great to have you guys on here. Can't see everyone on, but uh, it's great to have you guys. So if you guys have any real questions about this immediately on LinkedIn and Facebook, ask me. But seriously, what you do is you go in and see who's having conversations. And then you go in in a polite way, create a relationship with them. All right. So you guys are on Facebook. You guys are on LinkedIn. Now we're on to Twitter. I think you're starting to get a message as to what we're seeing here. So this is the – think of Twitter as a – newspaper feed that you actually get to curate. So if you're looking for business or people that might be your target customer, what you want to do is follow people that you want to be, um, that you want to have relationships with. And what you'll do is by doing this, you start following them and see what they're communicating about. Bob Ruffalo talks about B2B versus B2Cs and then has this type of content here. And so what you'll see is this is the page that you go through. And so as you'll see, we typed marketing and the search. And so you can see that right here. What? Can't see it. Mm -hmm. um, and so you see that right here. And then what we'll do next is uh, tag B2B versus B2C, and this is the post. So now I can create a relationship with this person by simply just saying, uh, you know, don't just retweet and like those, those, those are what everyone does. Go deeper and actually create a comment and say, hey, I appreciate what um, you're doing, or I like what you just said, you know, and, and interact with these people. So think of digital, use digital the same way that you use your life. If someone says something and you like it, you comment on it, right? Something that we've been uh, talking about recently, and we just coined the name, uh, it's the answering machine. How many people do you know that get an email or get a tweet or get a Facebook message on their personal or business? Uh, and, you know, we're not talking about derogatory things, but get these messages and just leave them blank. 
and don't do anything with it. Why are you, the whole thing about a social network is to be social. So you need to be social. So think of it like this. If someone calls you and they leave a voicemail, are you calling them back? In the messages below, I want to hear if you guys would call them back. Simply say yes or no. If someone calls you and says, I want business from you, or I am your target customer, are you going to respond to them? Are you? You would not believe how many people leave their stuff alone and just don't do anything with it. If you want to be in business, it goes both ways. You invest in them, they invest in you. And so if you want someone, it, well, here's the crazy thing. When someone's doing it and you don't respond, look how silly you are. You're just leaving it open. Like a guy went for a high five and you just like left him, left him high and dry. I mean, does that sound like a good idea? Probably not. And so, hey, Johnny, what's up? Um, what I don't understand is why people invest their time one way and then when they get the exact response that they want from their target customer, they do nothing with it. So if you ever have been to Hatch's Facebook page, Hatch's Twitter page, Hatch Zach Miller's pages of those things, guess what? We respond. And you know why? Because people said something to us. Imagine if you're walking down the street and someone says, hey, Brian, how are you? And you just walk by. Don't do anything. You know you're leaving them high and dry. That is the exact same thing with social. So as crazy as it seems, it's not that crazy because people, people will do what, what people, People want you to respond, but when you don't respond, guess what happens? You make them you, you make them feel like an idiot and they probably will never engage with you again. And I'm gonna make the assumption right now that everyone on here does not have 100,000 comments coming at you a day. And so until you do, you probably should go and invest the time in doing the thing that you said you're gonna do. So if you write a if you write a post and ask for questions, you should engage with that person. All right, rant number one done. Back to Twitter. So as you can see, these are people that are talking um, on Twitter. Another great way to find people that are communicating in a mass kind of way is this thing called Twitter chats. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I never did a Twitter chat until I started hosting Hampton Roads Business Weekly, the weekly business show that I do on ABC. Uh, and uh, what's really, 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 really interesting about it is it's aggressive as crap, but a lot of people tweet and engage. And so while you can engage with them immediately, I recommend doing something even deeper is creating a relationship with them at a later time. Why? Because don't just do it that time to, you know, because you, you know you're supposed to, but start following them and start seeing what they're doing throughout time and engage with them. It's a great way for you to get a ton of information from them, learn about them, and then actually make it happen. This is one of my favorite things, asking social. Oftentimes, you have people communicate with you, and how can you, see, actually here, there's a great example. So my favorite social network is, um, is Facebook. Why? Because it's the one that works best for us. And in this, I communicate a lot. So as I take my inventory, like we talked about at the very beginning, I know that I get my most bang for buck on Facebook. So I give it the most time possible. And so uh, as you'll see in here, I reply to all of these things. And so, um, Oops, well, error, I apologize. Uh, as you see, I reply to these, these messages and the ones that hadn't been replied to yet, I did at a later time. 
Thanks for making me look bad, Dave. I'm just messing. No, but I engage with these people because I asked them to. And so I asked them a question about our local startup co uh, community. So it was very focused to the 757 region. But if it, if it, even if it wasn't, I'm still going to respond because that's what I do. Um, and so what you'll see is these people that might communicate with me, I'm then going to go deeper with them. I could also do this from a group. Um, and so these are two engagements, one with Stanley and one with Neely. Uh, Neely might be on today. Um, I haven't seen you yet, but I hope you are, Neely. I hope everything's going good. Uh, these are how I've communicated with them. As you see here, where are your struggles? Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to um, actually learn about this person. And so really investing in their future. Chris, here's my answer. What are your thoughts on having both a personal and business profile on Twitter? Uh, and, I'll, and I'll say this for all profiles. Um, I think they're important, but um, I don't think you should um, create any kind of social network if you're not going to invest the time in it. It's that simple. So if you're not going to invest the time um, doing that specific thing that it's supposed to do, then you should not sign up for that. And so, you know, by being an early adopter on a platform is risky, but it also means that you're going to have other early adopters with you that you could have become super fans so that when that platform goes deeper uh, and bigger, you're one of the champions of the platform and you have a bunch of champions with you. And so what I would say with anyone trying to create a social uh, a social profile on any network, if you're not going to invest the time in it, don't create it. Should you create both a business and a individual page? Again, it's kind of the same answer. You should do the things that you are going to invest the time in. And so if you, Chris, are not going to invest the time in both of those things, then don't create them. If you're going to invest in both of them, absolutely create them both and win them every single day. I actually did this this morning. Um, and I'll show you guys exactly what I do when I go back to camera off the slides in, in a second. Uh, but I, here, you can hear the cards. Woo! I went through my inventory, and I do this probably once or twice uh, a quarter. I go through the business cards that I have met people within the last five years and say, you know, I might not have had a relation, a great relationship with this person um, throughout the years, uh, but I do have a great relation, or I do know what they do, and maybe I can help them now. So I go back through and I make a couple of piles. And so I'll show you guys. Um, actually, you know what? Why wait? Let's do it. Um, here are the business cards, right? These are the ones that I picked out. Let's see if any of you guys are on here. Let's find one. These are the business cards, right? And so I go through these, and I actually, this right here is the box of ones over the last few months, okay? So these are the business cards of people that I've met over the last few months. Out of this, I realized that this is who I think right now is going to be my target. And I also keep, at all times, a binder of cards of people that I've met. And it's amazing to just go right through it. But for right now, the cards that are going to work are these ones. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to each of these people individually and re-engage and recreate a relationship with them. Remember, there's two buckets. The bucket of target customers that I'm going to land right now. And the other are key influencers that can help me land the business of the other bucket. And so these people, I'll show you their names. Here is all of them, right? What I will do, and I'll just you know, pick a card, any card. Oh, I don't want to do that one. It's terrible. The person shouldn't do it. All right. Uh, actually, I'll do this one because I think Chandler's watching. All right, so this is David Revis, okay? David, uh, he is opening a brewery uh, in southeastern Virginia. Um, and he came to my, my event recently and I just want to reach back out and see what's going on, what's keeping him up. So this is what I'll do. I found the card. Now I will go into Gmail and type in David at threebrotherswhiskey.com and on the subject line, I will say, Hey Dave, what's up? 
how is business going? And then, and so that, so I use subject lines as what I want the result to be. And so the question in there is the answer. I want to know how business is going. And so then I'll go, hey Dave, um, hope you're doing well. Thanks for coming to the startup address. And just want to check in and see how progress is going. I know that it's been a long time coming uh, and I'm super stoked for your growth, um, but would love to know what's, uh, what's going on with it right now and how I can help. And then I'll say, you know, sign it, Zach. And then I'll wait and hopefully he will respond. And so um, if he responds, we'll start having a conversation. And at some point, maybe I upsell him on, on something that we have. Or I just, you know, want to drink his whiskey. Who knows? Um, I don't really like liquor, so it probably won't be the whiskey. Sorry, Dave, if you're watching. Um, and that's okay, you know, but, but he's someone that I think, um, you know, needs what I need. And, um, um, I want to I want to give him that thing. So I have you know kind of funneled down my own business card network of people that I've met with over time, and I said this is the next person, and this is how I'm going to have a relationship with them, um, and do that. And so um, it is something that works tremendous for us, and I will continue to do it for as long as humanly possible. And so as you'll see, since I didn't have a live demo ready to this but this is this is a bunch of business cards and from those business cards you have the hot leads and the cold leads you need to determine that yourself from a conversation that you have with that person and what's great about it is you determine who's good and who's not and you actually have that conversation my guess is dave is going to respond pretty quickly all right i'm gonna take a couple questions right now chase let me scroll through Chase says, do you recommend combining the two early on, such as inviting your personal account friends to like your business page just to get initial following or early on? Look, I mean, sure. I, so you're saying like if, if you have friends that are, um, if you have friends that are, could also be your followers on or friends on Facebook or Twitter. Yeah, I mean, I think it's fine. The, the key is though, that, is that you don't want people to just like your stuff and get bad information off of it. A lot of times people will do something, get a good result, but the problem is, is that the conversion in there actually isn't the like or comment. The conversion is something else later. It, that, it's that it's what you do with it. So let's say you have a thousand friends, Chase, and you invite all of them to like Commonwealth, um, commonwealthentrepreneurs.com, I think is what it is. And so if they go to that page or if they go and like your page, but they're not your target customer, what are you getting out of them? You're you're getting a false like, a false impression. So then you get excited because 15 people like to post of yours, but they're only doing it because it's your mom and your friends. And so do you really want your mom or your friends to be posting? Sure, because it makes you feel better. But remember, emotions are, are, are what kills businesses. Don't make an emotional decision, make a data-backed decision. So Chase, what I would say is, sure, you can invite them, but don't allow them to give you uh, the impression that something is happening when it's not. So if you look through and you invite all of your friends from school and your family, and they're the only ones who are liking your page and they're not your target customer, you're doing yourself a disservice uh, and those people aren't actually engaging with you or they're engaging with you, but they're not giving you the correct information. So you may make a bad uh, decision by using emotions or by getting a piece of data but because it wasn't qualified, you make a decision to do something and it, and it actually wasn't the right thing. Hey, Shamika, how's it going? What's up? You'll get the mom effect. Exactly. Now, I, now you're going to make me say that. Thanks, Sean. So my mom, um, sorry for you guys who have heard this story. And um, it's just funny. It's a, it's a fun thing. My mom... Um, when I grew up said that I was an amazing singer in seventh grade, she decided, or I decided I was going to try out for chorus. Well, little did I know, um, is that my mom told me I'm a great singer my entire life. So when I go try out for chorus, seventh grade, the teacher, I start singing. You guys want to hear me sing? You want, you want to hear me sing? What song? I'm going to sing a song. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder. I don't even know the words, but so I go up there and I sing, and the, the teacher in the best Simon Cowell kind of way from American Idol says, uh, yeah, stop. No, you're done. 
but I listened to my mom. And my mom, who I love to death, basically gave me false information. And so because she wasn't qualified, I went on and embarrassed myself. Don't allow someone to give you information um, that has no bearing towards your ultimate conversion. And so little, uh, little did I know that I just wasn't a good singer. Funny stories, I tell my mom this recently within the last six months, and um, she goes, but you are a great singer, Zach. And I'm like, no, mom, I'm not. Like, I don't know why you don't, why you think I'm such a, a good singer. I'm like the worst singer in the world. And, uh, but no, she swears that I'm a great singer. And I'm sure um, if she ever was watching this, she'd be like, oh, but you are. And she'd comment in the stuff and be like, oh, it's amazing. Um, but, you know. Um, yeah, so Chase, so I use subject lines like text messages because the result that I want, and if you look at it, and I have no idea what's gonna pop up on my phone when I show you guys this, but if you look at text, so when you're uh, doing text, this is how you communicate with someone, right? But in email, people wanna write this big body. Well, why would you write this big body? And I don't know if you guys can really see, when all the person is seeing is it's that's the name and that's the information. So use text as a subject line. It works wonders and you get the result that you want. Sean, I do not, but thanks. Um, I appreciate that, thanks so much. Um, and so, you know, if you guys have a question, ask me right now, uh, and we'll, or we'll get right back into it, or we'll get ready for the next one. But look, you have to qualify these things, um, and a lot of people are terrified to to do that. I was actually talking to someone the other day, and they said, "Hey, you know, we uh, I, I we're looking for this thing. Uh, let's just say it's a logo, and um, we're looking for a logo. Um, do you know who it could be?" I said, "Well, maybe it could be us." Um, what is your budget? Or, or uh, typically it costs between this range of money. And um, they said, well, that's out of our budget. So here, here's why this is important. I didn't have to go any further. I didn't have to have meetings with this person. I just asked question number two, can you afford this thing? The answer was no. And I didn't waste any more time trying to figure out if that was the right thing or not. And so I look at that as a huge win because if time is the one thing in life that I'm never getting back, guess what? I didn't waste a lot of it because I asked a simple question. You cannot be afraid to learn if someone needs what you have or not. And to piggyback that, I would ask the question, and I posted this on LinkedIn today, and it's also on um, startwithhatch.com, um, but how to qualify leads. And this is a bonus thing that we weren't gonna talk about, but I'll, I'll jump into it real quick, is if you wanna qualify a lead, ask them what their budget is. If they say they don't know what their budget is, uh, they probably don't have a budget for it. So you could be putting up you, you know, pages and pages of, of a proposal to find out that there's going to be sticker shock uh, and they don't have a budget for it. So they're not going to buy you. If you're not a line item for them, they're likely not going to convert no matter how good your product or service or business is when you actually send them that information. So don't waste your time doing it. All right, we did the question. Networking meetings. How many of you guys are on meetup.com? You know, it's an interesting tool um, to find a lot of different people. So meetup.com is a place where meetups happen. Um, and we have a page for Hatch, and I think we have just shy of 800 people on the list. And this, uh, what you'll see here, is that we create meetups for people to come and get educated on the things that we can. This is a, this is a, a specific thing that we did through Meetup. And so this is the page. <laughs> this is the profile of Jason Neff. Uh, hey, Jason, hope you're doing well. Haven't seen you in a while, but I'm sure things are well. Um, and then I can find that person uh, who's coming to that event, and then I can direct message them. Here's why this is important. Whenever you're going to go to an event, you want to make sure that the people that you want to meet or the type of person that you want to meet is actually going to be at that event. So do your due diligence beforehand. And so go to meetup.com, go to eventbrite.com, go to your Facebook group and see who's going to that event and then see who said, yes, I'm going. And then from that profile, create a direct message and say, hey, Jason, so in this case this is what I would do. Hey, Jason, I'm looking forward to meeting you at X event. Um, I'd love to just talk to you for five minutes and you've already made that connection. What's great about this is that now that person's looking for you when you're there and you have a list of three to five people 
uh, that you can go up to beforehand or um, you can go up to and have that interaction with at that actual meeting. Yeah, this meeting looks great. But if no one, actually this meeting doesn't look great. Let's be honest, I would not go to this meeting. Um, but there might be something good at this meeting. Uh, but you don't know if you haven't actually done your due diligence beforehand. Um, you can also call the event organizer and say, hey, who's coming on this list that is this? And then see if they will give you those people so that you can connect with them beforehand. Remember, if you don't ask, you don't receive. So every time uh, in life, you have to give them um, something. Um, you may have to give them something in, in, in return. But every time that something specific ha has happened in my life, I know it happened because I asked for it and I took that risk. Hey, Cookie Text, what's up, Jeannie? <laughs> I'd go if they had a Cookie Text. Well, who wouldn't go if they had a Cookie Text? If you guys haven't checked out Cookie Text, um, you're missing out. But look at this networking meeting. You don't just want to go blind into this meeting because you're going to waste your time. What you want to have is situations like this where you can get one-on-one -on -one with someone and, you know, drink coffee because coffee's cool. One of the most important things whenever you meet someone is to not pimp yourself out. You want to listen and hear what they have to say. You want to know what they what they love what they do but you don't have to hound them about you you want to listen this is probably my favorite part of the slide deck i can't wait you want to listen you want to listen just like the hulkster said you know i i, I if we had a split screen right now you could see i'm doing the hulk hogan uh, you know, ear thing. You want to listen. And, I, and I'm serious about this because so many people go into something and are like, uh, I just want, I just want to tell you about me because I'm awesome. And this is great. You know, you want to know what's made Zach successful. I'm going to tell you real quick. I listen to people. I care and I try to help them. That's it. If you just go up to someone, how many of you guys have been to a networking meeting and people just start selling them. Oh, hi! I want to sell you car insurance, or hi! I want to sell you this this thing. You know, you hate that crap. When you see it on a commercial, what do you do? Click. When you, when you hear an ad on online on Pandora, what do you do? Oh my God! I can't wait till this is over. Don't be that same thing. Instead, be different. Listen from them. You guys know I have a dog named Ashbrook, and hopefully you won't hear him today. But he's got big ears. You gotta listen, people. Listen, invest the time in learning. It's all about learning about these people. Some things that you can ask them are what's keeping you up at night. That's a scary, scary design right there. What's keeping you up at night? And start from there. That's a great icebreaker for people. Um, and it's something that has worked tremendously. Trace, or Ch Trace, Chase. Says, thank you, Zach. I didn't mean about getting any sort of validation since I know friends and family aren't always reliable sources, but just uh, to target customer isn't the first like. Yeah, you know, obviously you wanna have people on there, but again, a lot of people can take that information and think that they're getting something great. Here's a great example. When I was trying to write my second book, um, someone said, um, or I had the idea to do it um, uh, on the concept of Fiverr, which is $5 uh, things for, on Fiverr cost five bucks. And I said, you know, what if I wrote a book, an ebook, or even, you know, a, a published book on marketing things that you can do that cost five bucks? So what I did is I created on a payment gateway a page that would accept $5 from the, and of course, you know, you're going to charge $5 for the book. And so I created a page on gumroad.com and said, I'm going to, um, uh, I am going to uh, think about writing a book and the topic is on how to market um, or get marketing services or things around marketing that cost $5. If you are interested, please pre-order and um, if I get uh, you know enough interest, I will write the book. As someone who's written a book, it took me a year 
Um, I've made probably three to four thousand dollars on it, and I'm happy with that. But it's a lot of time to get something like that done, and so it's a hundred pages, and um, I'm happy with it. I learned a lot by doing it, but I didn't really want to invest the time doing it again if I wasn't going to get the results out of it. So what happens when I um, do this book? And I post it on Facebook and tell people I'm going to do it. I sold. Oh, I sold one copy. So guess what I didn't do, folks? Because I qualified this with money, I learned who was serious and who isn't. And I sold one copy. I did not write the book. I did not write the book. I did not waste my time. Now, maybe I should try it again, right? How many of you guys would want me to write that book? You know? Maybe I'll do it. All you have to go, all you have to do is go to PayPal right now and send me five bucks at Zach at HatchNorfolk.com. And I will, if I get, you know, a hundred people buy it, I'll write some sort of short ebook to do it. But you get my point? Like when you start adding this qualifier in there, you see who's serious or not. I'm a firm believer that if you can get someone to give you $1, you can probably get them to give you $10 and $100 and $1,000 and $10,000. Why? Because the hardest part is getting that first dollar. You can, if you provide them more value over time, they will be willing to give you money. And so by qualifying that um, in this message where I'm like, I don't, I don't know that I want to write this book, but if people want it and I know that that interest is there, I will, I'll write it. And so I didn't write it because one person bought the book. And then, you know, the way I feel is on to the next. And like you said, Jeannie, right. People love to talk about themselves. If you listen, they'll be, um, you know, they'll remember feeling good about you and their presence. Absolutely. And another thing that I think is so important is when people, um, you know, take notes or learn something specific about them. One of my favorite things when I meet someone new is learn something funky about them, whether it's a uh, New York Yankees hat, maybe it's the color of their tie, maybe they have a, maybe they're wearing a suit and they have a little pin on it, uh, and that pin represents something that's really important to them. Find something unique about them and ask them about that. All right, so we're going to talk about some sites right now that you guys likely don't know about, but are great places to find um, find answers for yourself. Quora, which is a specific question and answer platform, is a great place where you guys can um, just peruse, if you will, um, and get answers. And so you would go on Quora and uh, you can ask the question yourself, or you can go and find and search the specific questions that people are asking um, in a specific, um, in a specific, uh, topic, just so you guys know, it did start, uh, thunder, lightning and raining here. So, uh, if we get some big thunderstorms, don't worry, I'll be there for you because I'm going to be your one crying shoulder. Um, you know, I like to have a little fun with these things. Um, I'm really super excited that you guys are all here and I'm really hopeful that you guys can, um, take these things and win a lot from them and, and do it. But uh, we should have fun in life and people that don't want to have fun in life. Um, you know, I really want them to change their mindsets and, and understand that life is too short um, and you, you should have fun. And so, you know, if, if you do need me to be that, you know, that crying shoulder during your thunderstorm, I'm happy to do that for you. Um, <laughs> probably not though. I probably, I probably really wouldn't. Um, but Quora is a great thing, and you can learn a ton about what people's real pain points are by just searching and watching questions. How many of you guys actually, <laughs> Jeannie, you're funny. How many of you guys actually go to these sites and just learn from? Customer discovery is a great way to see how big of a pain point is for someone. And if someone's out there writing about it, um, you you know, everyone has a great idea, but how serious is that idea to other people and how much... Um, you know, how big of a pain point is it to people is something that you want to learn. And so you'll see here, these are just different examples of how you can provide information to people um, by using different methods. Love Quora. So do I. It's a, it's a great way to just learn from that. 
Um, if you guys want to build up questions in here, would love to answer them for you. Um, or if you don't want to ask me a direct question here, all you have to do is go to Zach, Z-A-C-K, at startwithhatch.com, and I will respond afterwards. Reddit. How many guys are on Reddit? Now, I know what you guys are thinking, you know, these things, I don't really feel, um, I don't feel comfortable with these things, and that's okay. Use them as an encyclopedia. Use them as real-time data that you can learn from because people, Reddit, I think, is one of the top 10 sites in the world right now, and all it is is people posting stuff that are champions. Um, and so Reddit is a great tool to learn a lot from. And so obviously we're in the business of working with a lot of startups. Hatch is a gym for entrepreneurs. Um, and so by learning um, by their subreddits, which are basically a category, you can go through and learn different ways to see what people are doing um, and have communication with them. If you see what we're doing here is we're showing you a lot of different mediums that do similar things in ways that you can get involved with them. And so by being a champion on some of these sites is a way for you to become an authority in those spaces. And a lot of these places, most people aren't at. And so if you're on one of them or all of them, you're able to reinvest your time into these places and really win new business um, by going to where these people are. And so I often say, don't always go where people, um, where you think people are, go where they actually are. And so instead of, and I had a conversation with Tracy Link yesterday about this, and I said, you know, don't go to the event, don't go to their business to try and get business from them. Go where they are, like a networking event, and and learn from them there. Or, um, you know, if you're selling a dog product, don't go to the dog store to sell it. Go to the dog park because that's where all your customers are. And so I think go where they are um, instead of going where they will be. You know, similar, but they're very different. And so. Um, don't go where the person is going to tell you no. So if you walk into someone's business, cold call them and say, hey, you want to buy this thing? Guess what the answer is going to be? But if you can create a relationship with them in a place where they are, you're more likely to win that. And I think, you know, these social networks are that as well. You know, you know, uh, Shamiko, Reddit is a, is an, a very interesting tool. You can learn a ton from um, and, you know, just be a fly on the wall for the next 30 days. I would just, you know, be a fly on the wall. And when you have something to say, say it. Don't force anything. Because I think when you try and force anything, people, um, you know, if the first thing you do is promote your business, well, what's going to happen? People are going to be like, oh, God, spam city. But if you've given them a lot of educational tools or a lot of educational stuff over you know, the months by just liking it or saying, you know, oh, yeah, I tried it this way and this is what happened. And you've never actually posted that said thing. You're going to learn a ton from it. And so I think um, by uh, just being a fly on the wall and as needed being social on it, you can you can learn a ton from it. And so it's it's great. So a lot of so, so, you know, I think I'm decent at marketing and sales. And a lot of people talk about, you know, you have to have all this SEO and you have to have this pretty site and your your business cards need to look amazing and everything. I think that's all crap. I really do. And the reason why is because if you don't have a good conversation with someone, that exchange of the business card doesn't mean crap. I feel like I should get on camera for this because I'm about to get on a rant. You guys want to see this rant. Uh, I can I can feel it. I can feel it coming. And it's going to be amazing. And so I want you guys to see it because it's going to be absolutely the most amazing thing since sliced bread. But seriously. People say that you have to have a great SEO strategy, and you gotta, you gotta, uh, you know, get radio advertising, and you gotta have a beautiful brand, and you gotta have the prettiest business cards in the world. Well, here's what I think about that: it's crap. Because if you don't have a good conversation with someone, it doesn't matter. A few months ago, I was at an event, and I'm gonna show you exactly what happened. I passed out all my business cards, but during this situation, I started having conversations with people after I didn't have any business cards left and guess what I did I can't find it but I was trying to find it all right here it is guess what I did I didn't have a pretty business card but I had a piece of paper and a pen and I asked them for their contact information 
guess what? I followed up with him afterwards. I did the things that matter. I didn't sit there and say, I need to invest all this money in making sure this thing is pretty or may work to the Google engines. No, I did the one-to-one -one thing and made sure that I could follow up with them. Recently, I went to an event and I, recently I went to an event and I met with 10 or so people. There's probably 50 people in the room and I met with 10 of them. I was asked to go to this event. It was, it was fine. It was lovely. And uh, typically I follow up with people very quickly. I think people are amazed at how quickly I follow up with them, literally within 12 hours. Um, and I think it's really important to do that because you're staying top of mind. But I decided with these people that I met that I was going to turn uh, the tables and see what would happen if I wasn't the first one to follow up. And I offered these people something very important that was something that they seemed extremely interested in. I said, look, I host a TV show. I'm constantly looking for new people that um, own a business um, and are uh, doing something interesting, interesting in their industry. How can we um, you know, learn about them and maybe get them on the show? So I didn't say we're gonna get you on the show, but I said, look, you need to get in my queue so that um, I can learn more about you and hopefully get you on the show if you're the right fit. So how many of you guys, if you got offered an opportunity to get um, showcased on a business show, would take that opportunity? If all of your hands aren't being raised right now, stop. Don't continue your business, just quit. This is free advertising. I was going to give you the opportunity to get in my queue to learn about you. And when the time was right, hopefully get you on the show. 10 business cards were exchanged, 10 conversations. Zero people followed up. I'm not making this up. Zero people. Zero. Zero, 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 zero. If you're not, if you're going to go to a meeting, you're going to meet with someone, and you're going to do nothing else, don't go to the meeting. Why waste your time getting these or these or the handshake sauce? Why do any of that if you're not going to do anything with it? It just, it boggles my mind that you could waste so much time having a conversation, seeing interested in something, and then doing nothing else with it. If I met you that day and you're on this webinar, you messed up and you should have called. I even said exactly what to do. I said, email me at this email and we will get to, or not, and we will talk. Nothing. I, it boggles my mind. It, it's, it's amazing to me that people will waste their time. And so back to the first thing that we talked about, by taking inventory in, in your life, why? What, why? Why would you go to that meeting? Or, you know, I went to this meeting and nothing happened out of it. Well, why do you think nothing happened out of it? Do you just expect that these things are going to, you know, magically appear? Guess what? They're not. They're not going to magically appear. Everything happens because you do it. Everything that has happened to me is because I did it. I went after it. And if you want, how close can I get to this? If you want a result to happen, create the action for it to happen. Stop creating a prettier website or an SEO campaign or buying some Google ad do the action one to one that looks good I'm, I'm dead freaking serious here many of you guys have heard the story of how i got the tv show i'm trying to sell a company to the tv station they balked on the idea of buying the tv station but they said hey 
we've got this new TV show that we're starting. We're looking for a host. Do you know who it could be? What do you think I did? I raised my hand. I should have raised them both. Look, if we want things to happen, you got to raise your hand. You got to go after it. It's that simple. If you want an action to happen, if you want an action to happen, create that action. What rant was that? Like four? That was amazing. <laughs> so proud of myself for that. Thank you guys for allowing me to do that. These things get great. Shamika, I'm not kidding. Can you believe it? Like, but but this and I we just posted something on the hatch page today that says that you know the most uh, most actions happen on the seventh to twelfth or you know, fifth to twelfth step. Well, yeah, because people need positive interactions with you. It's amazing, though. You know, if you want something, you got to go after it. Hey, Josh, what's up, buddy? All right, so the tools that aren't needed, and, and we, we we talked about this a little bit, the tools that aren't needed to get your next customer. You don't need a pretty website. You probably don't even need a website. We have one of my favorite businesses, actually two of my favorite businesses, I'm thinking of both of them, Jeremy, who we'll talk about in a minute. Actually, let's talk about him now. He was doing six figures business and didn't have a website because he communicated with people. One of my other favorite businesses does really good six figures and uh, replaces batteries in smoke detectors. Doesn't have a website. Doesn't have the greatest logo. Doesn't have SEO. Just straight hustles. Finds the target customer and goes after it. I mean, this looks nice, right? But if no one's coming to the site, does it matter? If you don't have the relationship with that person, do those things matter? No. Sean, you're funny. You can, you know, spend money on SEO, making things better. Hatch will come up. But that's because we're, you know, four years old and we've been doing these things slowly. But every single one of our interactions, our interactions with people, is because we had the interaction with them. Now look. I know what you guys are saying, Zach, you have pretty slides here. They're, they're great. But I didn't always. Now I've invested time and money in an amazing asset named Dave Ritt. But I wasn't always like that. It was only within the last 18 months that we started investing in infrastructure because it was, it was too much on me. I... And I couldn't stand looking at my slide decks anymore, to be honest. But these things don't matter. You, know, you don't have to waste time on those things. It's about the relationship. Boom! I don't know why we put that in there. That's funny. You don't need a developer to code it. You, there's no reason to build an app, by the way. If you, add, you know, if you get in front of your customer, your target customer, and they say they don't want it. You know how many projects I've been a part of where people build something? and then they push it and no one downloads it or pays for it? Do you know how big of a waste of time that is? A lot, a lot. Let's get your questions ready, guys. A lot of questions. It's amazing to me how many people think that they have the next big the biggest thing. How many people think they have the next biggest thing? They can't do it. They don't want to do it. They just want the result. People, it doesn't work like that. It just doesn't. And so create relationships and ask people. You don't need a developer. This guy looks serious. Very serious. Super stoked for you guys to be here. Thank you so much. You don't need a TV ad. Don't tell my fiance I said that. At a certain point, a TV ad is the right thing. But if you're starting a business or you're looking for your next customer, the reason you don't need TV ads is because 
you you don't have any of those things tested yet. Imagine a big bowl of spaghetti being your marketing. Take that bowl of spaghetti, right? Physically do this with me. Do you, do you guys want to see me on, on this? No, I don't think you want to see me doing this. Take the spaghetti out of the bowl. Hopefully it has meatballs too, because you know meatballs are good. And uh, some marinara sauce. Um, and take it and throw it at the wall and see what works and what doesn't. See what works and what doesn't. What you will find is that some things stick and some things don't. What you need to do is track these things, what does and what doesn't. And then over time, you can start doing those things over and over and over again, but not yet. Facebook ads, look, you don't need a Facebook ad. You can maybe spend five bucks to see something out. But if you're looking, if you go back to Facebook groups, guess what's gonna happen? You can go to those Facebook groups and create one-to-one -one conversations with people. That's what's important. And do you really click these ads anyway? Probably not. You don't need a fancy email opt-in. Now this is probably where you would start spending money. You know, if you can find something that actually can do this for free, I do recommend doing it because you can communicate with people at a later time. We use something, right? We use several services. Some of them are free, some of them are not. Lead Pages is one of them. Um, Lead Pages is one of them. Sumo Me is another one of them. Um, there's a lot of great tools out there that can get you to communicate with people at a later time. Um, and, and they can be an absolute great thing. Who's got questions right now? Sean, my biggest question for you is how do I get go about finding the right business partner? Well, I think you got to ask yourself, what is the business partner going to do? Is that something that um, is that something that you can do yourself? Is the business partner a financial thing? There's so many different ways that I can answer that. Just give me a little bit better context and I'll, and I'll try and answer it. If you guys are watching, uh, you guys have questions, Zach, Z-A-C-K at startwithhatch.com um, as well. Um, but Sean, let me know what you think or what, what you're looking for in a business partner. Clever copy is important, but you don't have to waste time on this. I mean, how much do you think this ad costs, $50,000? A lot. Stop looking at the company that it is today. You know, don't don't look at Apple today. Look at Apple in the garage. Don't look at Facebook today. Think about Facebook as the college directory to find out if the girl that I think is cute is single or not, because that's where it was day one, and that's where you probably are today. Think in that kind of mindset. Let me tell you a story about Ian Taylor, one of my favorite people in the world. Saw him last Friday. He started a company with a pen and a piece of paper. He's gonna do really well in business this year and next year and the next year. What does Ian do? Well, he wanted to get food delivered to his house, but not pizza or Chinese. Now this is four years ago when Postmates and Order Up and all these things weren't around, but he said, you know what? I want something delivered from Hell's Kitchen, but Hell's Kitchen doesn't deliver. And I can't go because I've had a bit too many cocktails. So how do I get that thing done? Well, I'm going to create my own solution to the problem. And so what he did is he said, where are people that need my product? In dense places, maybe a college university. So I'm going to write my phone number down and say, if you want something delivered, call this number and I will deliver it to you. He made $250 his first weekend. And that's not counting, you know, the Taco Bell sales. That's saying $250 worth of transactions after the sale of the product. Hey, Cookie Text. How does she do this? Ask her right now. She wasn't expecting this to be in here. What does she do? She has relationships online. 
And another other thing she does is she knows where a lot of her customers are, and she gives her uh, she gives a little sample away, like you would at Costco or the food uh, the food court. And then she takes that information and gives them a specific code to use so that she can track it. All things she can do today. If you haven't had these cookies, seriously, they're good. If you don't live in the Norfolk area, I'm sorry. We talked about Jeremy earlier, how he didn't have a website. And then there's Eric. So Eric opens his business about this time two years ago. It was himself for the first nine months. And now I think he's at 10 employees is gonna, and is gonna do very well in business as well this year. Love this guy to death. Here's what he did when he was open for business. He told the world he was open for business. He went into his inventory and sent everyone a message or direct mail or some form of communication and said, hey, remember me? My name is Eric Olson and I'm open for business and I need your help. If you need this type of service, which is in the IT infrastructure, I want to give you, I want to work with you. And by that, he got his first customer, and then his next customer, and his next customer, and on and on and on again. You can't be shy about this, folks. If you're open for business, tell the damn world. Because you can't sit there and say, oh, business isn't going well. Well, who have you told? Let's go back to the inventory thing again. When you look at it, how much are you actually telling people that you're doing? If you're not telling anyone that you're open for business, how do they know that you are open for business? They don't. So you can't expect a result if you don't ask for that action. You cannot expect a result if you don't ask for that action. I'll take a couple more questions right now, and then I'm going to tell you guys about why I started Hatch. All right, Sean, um, let, me, let me read this real quick. So you have a finance guy to run the books for the food truck, but I need another partner who has culinary degree to establish the business. I have too many ex-classmates that are unreliable, and now I find myself stuck trying to figure out how to approach finding the right person. So you need someone with uh, that has culinary chops that can do that kind of stuff. You know. One thing that I think, um, guess you're the only one with a question. Hey, it happens. No worries. Um, one thing that I think a lot of people do often is they um, they think they need to hire a partner instead of actually just hiring an employee. So don't um, don't always think about finding another partner when you could just pay that person to do that thing. I know money might be tight, but get creative so that you don't have to give someone a, um, a part of your company when they might not be the right fit. I've had a lot of partners in my life, and sometimes it can be really, really tough. And um, it doesn't always end as great. And I always recommend people, if they really don't have to have a partner, don't. And so if you can get creative and not give someone a piece of your company, don't. Because likely, that person isn't going to work as hard as you. They're just not. And so that can be really tough. I knew I forgot to turn off notifications. Jeannie, why are you texting me in the middle of this? All right, I want to answer a couple of quick questions real quick on something that I did recently that was really interesting. So a lot of our companies um, in Hatch, and Hatch is a gym for entrepreneurs, um, and so we'll go over that in a minute. And I'll tell you why I started it. But a lot of our companies have said, I just can't get in front of people. And I said to myself on a Friday night, I said, you know, it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, you know, they have so many things that they can tap into. Like I just showed you guys over the last few minutes, there's so many things that you can tap into. Why aren't they tapping into it? And so I said, you know what? I'm not going to just sit here and, and, and say, oh, you can't do this. I'm going to do it myself. And then I'm going to show everyone exactly what I did. So I'm of the opinion that meetings are way too long. Meetings should be five to 10 minutes long. So what would happen if I create a series of 10 minute meetings uh, in an hour. And so on Friday night, I'm at home and I decided to test this out. So I go to LinkedIn 
and I go to my recent connections with people and I reach out to eight people and I say, hey, can you talk on Monday? Remember, this is Friday night at eight o'clock. Can I, can we have a call on Monday for 10 minutes? Seven of the eight people answered and we scheduled that call. And so we did it between the time of, I think, 10 and 11.10 in the morning. And when I come in on Monday morning, I tell Dini, uh, who comes in around eight, I said, hey, I'm gonna do this thing. Um, it's gonna be really interesting. Uh, I'm just gonna have a bunch of 10 minute calls to learn about people and what their problems are. She goes, you can't do that. It's, 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 you need more time than that. I said, nope, watch me. And so during that, I had a series, I had the series of calls and I, it was an amazing thing. And I took pages of notes. I'm gonna show you guys the notes right now. The, I learned so much because here's the thing. People had, people needed, here's one page. Here's another page of notes. And during that, I have an action item of what, maybe we have the content already for them or maybe we have the information that we have them, but I didn't know because I didn't ask. And so by taking notes of people that are associated with me or aren't associated with me that have something that I have, now I can distribute that information to them. And so those, um, the, it was seven calls. And I actually, um, I don't know if you guys can see, but I actually put the time of each one and how long it took. Um, Jeannie, by the way, uh, yours was 15 minutes. You, were, you talked a lot, sorry. Um, but some of them were seven minutes. Uh, and, and, and so, look, everything is possible. And people will say, well, Zach, you know, you need more than 10 minutes. Here's the thing. We don't need to beat around the bush. I don't need to know about your weekend, you know, the puppies, the babies, all those things. Let's talk business. Let's get down to it. What's really keeping you up at night? And do I have something that I can help you with? And the answer is hopefully, right? And so in many cases, I was able to provide information to people through experiences that I had done or afterwards sent them something that we had already created. And so two days goes, goes by and I say, man, this is going really good. I've learned a lot. I want to do this again. So I decided to create something called the 50, 10 challenge. Many of you guys were a part of that where I want to do 50 calls. So I guess it'll be 50, 50 calls, maybe 50, 50 calls at 10 minutes each. Now I didn't get to 50, you got the 25. And I did this over a period of two days and I'll tell you exactly how I did this. Number one, I created a woofoo form that said a series of things like what's your name what's your phone number can you talk it between these times you guys have seen this and uh what do you want to talk about and so person would fill it out and then i would during that i would um i would then schedule it and then i would talk to them and when i got on the call with them i said hey you know uh hey how hey Brittany, hey woody hey donna uh, hey, Shay, you said you want to talk about this. Well, let's talk about it. And so instead of being around the bush, we can really dive in deep. And so by really getting quality on these things, you can really figure out what these people are looking for immediately. And so from a marketing perspective, I'll tell you exactly what I did. So I create the Wufu form. That's what it looked like. Uh, and Wufu, I think, is free up to a certain amount of money. So you can get that tool for free. It's W-U-F-O-O. -O. You guys might be able to hear my dog behind me. He's scratching. Um, and so I created that form. Then I went on Facebook and said, you know, I want to talk to you for 10 minutes. Do this. Three people signed up from there. Then we had an existing list, an email list that had about 600 people on it. I think 601 people. And I wrote an email on Friday night again and said, hey, I have 10 minutes on Monday. I want to talk to you. Um, can we schedule this? And sent them the link of which we then got, I think, 18. So then we're at 18 plus three at 21. And then a trickle effect over the next few days of some people um, signed up as well. And we were able to do 25 calls over uh, the period of two days um, each at 10 minutes each. And what you'll find out is some of those calls were eight minutes, four minutes, uh, 4.56. Um, some of them went a little over and that's okay, but we learned from them. Jared, you were one of them. Uh, Jared, you got a little extra time because someone was a no-show and that's okay. But what you'll find by doing this is you learn a ton from these people. You learn a lot when all you do is ask them what is keeping them up or what their pain point is. And so you guys can do that too. If you guys want to learn more about the story, how we've um, documented it, you got to go to startwithhatch.com backslash 50TEN um, is what you got to do. And so let me get right back into the slides and we will go and it's going to be a wonderful wonderful next
All right, so you can see Eric. He's a lovely, lovely guy. All right, so let me tell you guys a quick little story about Hatch. This is a picture of me in a suit store. I know it's amazing. So a few years ago, I'm growing a business, and I'm looking at ways to do it, and I just can't find the answers. Or I'm looking for the answers to do this. And to be honest, I, I kept looking. I kept going to places where everyone kept telling me to go. And to be honest, um, the answers just weren't they, weren't, they weren't working. And I go to them, and they just say, you just need to dress to impress. And that's like the thing that they would tell you to do. And I kept saying, this can't be the real answer. There's got to be more and more and more of this. But that was the answer that people kept giving me, and there was nothing else in town to do it. Um, so I started hosting meetups where I would bring together my target market, which was other entrepreneurs, and uh, learn from them. And I created my own resources. And so this is an event that we put on, as you'll see. I do have a suit jacket on there. I don't know why. Um, and then this is one of the events where basically people just wanted to know what I learned from hosting these meetups is that people wanted to learn what other businesses were going on in their backyards. So we started an event called Startup Night where we would put together people um, that were producing companies, products, services in our backyard. Um, and what was cool about it is I was able to um, help them get their message across. And they would be able to test what they were working on, or people would learn about it. And so this is one of the one of the early ones. Um, this is Sean Evangelista, who has got a company called Thirty Seconds Out, and they are an apparel business, and they do about fifteen thousand dollars a month um, in revenue, and it's really cool stuff. And he runs it out of his house. And so we started doing these workshops where we would provide social media, Facebook ads, email marketing, how to get investments, building apps, um, and people really wanted it. And it was really interesting because. Every, everything that everyone does is so time sensitive that, you know, if I got to be at something at on a Sunday at two o'clock, but I got to go somewhere else, I had to miss it. And so we started doing these workshops and recording them and streaming them and people were able to get the information that they needed. Um, and so other people kept asking, how can I get access to these resources? And to be honest, forever, I kept saying, I can't give it to you. I don't have a business model. So 1004 was born. The concept of this is to create an army of businesses, a thousand businesses with an average of four employees each. Imagine what you can do with an army of a thousand businesses and the relationships and the collaboration and the communication of businesses that are all going through similar steps together is something that is very, very unique. And what would happen if we could put them all together and put them through the same thing at the same time? So 1004 is an online directory of step-by-step -step modules led by people who are experts in their respective fields. It's all on demand. Think of 1004, think of Hatch as a gym for entrepreneurs. And let me tell you this, one of the most annoying things in the world is when you have a professor telling you how to start a business that never started a business. The context is so off. What you won't get at 1004 is you won't get a professor teaching you how to do something that's never done it themselves. It's highly curated. It's highly uh, qualified by people who have actually done the thing that they've done. So no soup for you, Mr. Professor. <laughs> 1004 simply is your on-demand go-to place for business resources. We drop new content just like Netflix does every single week. There's a mastermind group. You get exposure and exclusive content that no one else can get, and everything is on demand. So if you have a question on how to create your next marketing campaign, you can get that video content on demand wherever you are. We'd love for you guys to sign up. All you got to do is on the page that you're at right now, simply click membership above and join. It's 30 bucks a month to get a plethora of all these amazing resources. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And it's just a great resource for any business. And I think that you will love it. And for 30 bucks a month, it's like a buck a day. I mean, you just really can't beat it. And so that's it. Other than that, you're already on the website, startwithhatch.com. There's a ton of great resources there. We would love, love, love to hear from you guys. Um, you can message me at Zach, Z-A-C-K, at Start With Hatch. Find us on Facebook and on Twitter, Start With Hatch.
uh, backslash start with hatch. But message me anytime. Um, and we'd love to have you guys in 1004. All you have to do is go to membership above or click uh, or go to 1004.com, 1000four.com to get started today, to get your business resources online. I want to know how I can help you. If I have not created a 10 minute phone call with you, I want you to connect with me. I want to have the call. All you have to do is go to the page, startwithhatch.com backslash 50TEN, and I want to learn what is keeping you up at night, or just email me at the message or at the email here and, and do it. And so I extremely thank you guys for your time. This has been absolutely wonderful. Um, and if any other questions, hit me up online. This has been absolutely amazing. Um, and uh, start with hatch.com. 1004.com to become a member today. And I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for your, your, your time. Let's grow your business. Let's make it happen. See you soon.